Okay, good evening all. I'm going to call the February 15th uh, regular select board meeting for the town of Berlin to order. Um, with us is uh, Flo Smith, Justin Lawrence, Angelina Capron. Um, also with us is uh, Vince Conti, town administrator, Thomas Badowski, assistant administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Tom, Vince. Yeah, I have uh, one to add, which is the February 1st uh, minutes for review as well. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Um, Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay, um, I was getting ready to put the uh, two vehicles for auction that we wanted to that we wanted to put for auction for the two old police vehicles, and I was getting information on them. But in the meantime, uh, the police chief has come to me and said that he would like to use one of those vehicles. He is still having problems with the vehicle he has, and we put like seventeen hundred dollars into it last month, and he said he's still having issues. So he's asked that I wait to put the vehicles on until he's chosen one of those vehicles. And he'd like to use it in the meantime until um, our new vehicle comes in that he's ordered. And then he'll take off one of the other vehicles that's, you know, that's in, being used right now. So I, you know, before I take, before I do that, I need to obviously ask the select board if that's okay. And I don't know which vehicle he's gonna choose, but he's just saying he's still having all kinds of vehicles with a vehicle he, he now drives. The two vehicles are out here in the yard. Are they both tagged in uh, current inspections? Uh, one of them does not have a current inspection. Uh, one of them, the inspection was done in June of last year. Uh, but the other one, I do think the, I think it still has an inspection maybe till this month or March. I might want to take and point that out to them. I will, <laughs> I will. Has all the equipment been stripped off those vehicles or is one still equipped for his use? It's been stripped off. So There's what does that what does that entail for him to use it? I'm curious. That's the thing he'll have to take uh you know the, the lights and sirens and stuff like that off of the one he has right now and put them on. Yeah I just didn't know if he mentioned I mean I I by actually I feel like he should be able to use that as an inventory and, and in the meantime but I'm just curious if we know what expense that'll be. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I know he came to me. It's been like over a week now. He said, would you bring up the next meeting? He said, I really need this. And he didn't really give me any more information. I would, I would think as long as he's operating within his budget, he should be fine, right? Yes. Motion on this. Does it require a motion? Consensus on this? I think that seems reasonable. Me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, may, so, it makes sense to use what we got. Mm -hmm. Right. So what I will do is after he has chosen one and we've got everything solved, I will put the other one up for auction. And then later I'll do this one. Okay. Thank you, Diane. Anything else, Diane? Nope, that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, uh, new town center application, uh, Tom. Thanks, Brad. Uh, so you sent out notice to the select board that the February 22nd hearing date for the new town center was postponed until March 22nd, 2021. Uh, once I get a definitive time, I will forward that to the select board as well. We're trying to get as many folks to attend that meeting to show support for the application. Probably won't get much time to speak. We have we have 10 minutes to present our application to the downtown board, but there may be a series of questions that uh, could be directed towards uh, members of the select board. So again, uh, we will send that, uh, confirm the date and time as soon as we get that confirmation from the agency. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, anything else on this, Tom? No. Okay. Uh, Berlin Conservation Commission reappointment of Phil Gentilly. I make the motion to reappoint Phil Gentilly to the Berlin, uh, Berlin Commission, Conservation Commission. Your second? I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Yes, please. Yeah, go uh, ahead. So my question was, the last meeting where we had the uh, Conservation Commission on there, it was somewhat unclear and I, I just want a clarification as well. Uh, when we appoint members to the Conservation Committee, uh, it sounds as though it's not a, 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 a public, an actual board, it's an advisory committee. Is that correct, Brad? Uh, as far as the um, commission goes, yes. Okay. They, they, everything that, everything that um, policy and everything else has come through the select board. Right. So, um, one of the things I was curious about was just the number of members and why, I mean, I don't understand why we have to appoint people if, if it's just an advisory committee. And I, I wanted clarification on that. One of the things I was, if it's simply advisory, it doesn't matter how many members they have and who's appointed. And how, how does that work? Can you explain that? Well, the, the, the trouble is, is um, it's, uh, it's better to keep it on some formal footing because if you just have it, uh, they can show up when they want, then uh, that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody, uh, people who are interested in the, in the board, in the commission, to, to do the work that uh, what will, or do what work will come their way. And if you, if you just have it as a, a social gathering, nothing's gonna get done. It has to have some formal um, structure to it. So to me, the, what is, so the structure sounded like there what we didn't really give any direction on what the the town or the board thought the structure should look like other than just letting these boards have it and 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 so I I'm just curious well, I, I they, know that that's a little it's part of, doesn't change the appointment process but I I would think that given um given the the depth of the topics these guys have been dealing with that we would want to provide some structure to our boards that's that's clear clear and it doesn't seem like we've done that as a board recently so i just wanted to follow up on well the uh, back when the board was formed um there was a i won't say a uh, written out uh written uh, uh structure to it but i believe it was uh the Conservation Commission was appointed to take and uh, manage the town forest. And there was some other things, but I can't remember what they are. Um, it was before my time, but uh, we've always, the board, the select board has always allowed them to, uh, to um, manage the forest and the cuttings and whatnot. Uh, the, in the past, they've done a fine job with it. Most of those, uh, most of the work that they do is structured around the uh, state guidelines as far as, um, as far as uh, forest management goes. Um, they also do some other work uh, in um, that they also, I think the, most of these people serve also on the recreation committee. So, right, and that was that was a kind of it was one and the same until we just kind of separated the two, right? Yeah. Vince, you, I see Vince with his hand up. What's going on, Vince? You hey, well, because uh, I I just like to jump in here, my first day, and um, oh boy, yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just gonna throw this out there that um, you know I should probably dedicate some staff time to the to the commission. Uh, into the boards and maybe um, take a look at that whole process 
that was discussed at the last meeting as well. Maybe come up with some recommendations on how to uh, pull that together, support them, um, and move that forward a bit. Well, yeah, and I agree, Vince, and I appreciate that, and I think that's a great idea. My my only, I don't have an issue in any way, shape, or form. The more members on a lot of these commissions, the better, in my opinion. And I think we're going to get a more diversified approach, uh, perspective, if you will, on everything. Um, I just feel like we need some we we need some clear direction and we need we need some structure there and we I don't think we've had it so I'd appreciate it if we could do that. Okay. Again, I'll I'll take an action to to look at that and come up with some uh, some recommendations. Thank you. Anything else, Justin? That's all I have. Flo. No, that's wonderful. Thank you all. Yeah. Um, okay. All those in favor of reappointment of Phil Gentilly to the Conservation Commission signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Fisher Road Culvert Design and Permitting. Robert Clark from Otter Creek Engineering. Robert. Right. Good evening. How is everyone today? Good. Good. Good thank you. Yourself? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. Good. Um, so I, I was asked to come uh, by Tom Badowski tonight and just give a brief update on where things are at with the culvert design and permitting and kind of schedule for everything. Uh, right now, we're still on track with everything we had discussed a, a month or so ago, maybe a little bit more with the board. Um, the intent right now is to essentially advertise for bid in the next two to three weeks, uh, right around when you guys are going to be having your, your vote theoretically for this project. And then um, the thought would be bids would be opened at the end of March, and um, and we would also know and have the results of a uh, of a vote by that time, and then we could move forward with um, signing a contract and getting a contractor on board for construction this summer. Uh, I have all of the permit applications finished uh, for for Tom's review. Um, I need to send them with final plans. We're we're making some tweaks to those. We had a meeting with. Uh, the geotechnical engineer and the structural engineer the other day to just make sure everything was aligned where we wanted it to be. But I think uh, Tom should have those in his hands this week and, and then um, we can go ahead and get the permit applications in. Does anyone have any questions? I did share with the board uh, in their packet, the, the design drawings as they stand now. Um, so they, you, um, Robert, do you want to talk to, about any of those or? So, yeah, I think the, the thing that was in there, Tom, was the, the sections and the plan view, but I think we've, we've fine tuned those actually quite a bit since last week. Um, okay. just, just because we, we had a couple of, uh, other changes. So we have a utility relocation plan for the existing utilities there. I think the biggest thing to notice is how much of an area this this project really takes up, and um, you know it, it's certainly a much larger structure than what was there. Now, we've gone through all the hydraulic sizing requirements and um, kind of completed everything that we needed to do to satisfy the the river management engineer's criteria. Um, but I think it it's just a much larger structure, and and I think the plans really put that into perspective when you look at them. It's what thirty foot wide. 25, 26 feet tall. Yeah, and it, it has almost a 40 feet of excavation when you factor in getting down to the footings. And um, it's, a, it's a challenging site, certainly. So I remember the initial conversation. This does appear to be, an, is this narrower than the previous one we had looked at and maybe taller or something. I don't know if anybody can explain that, but I thought we were talking about a much wider structure when we were going through there prior. Originally, the state had requested somewhere between 35 and 40 feet when we went out and did some supplemental topographic survey in the late fall. Uh, we were able to get that width down to a total of 30, 30 feet of clear span. So it is a little narrower. It's, it's not any narrower than the last update that we had provided, but it is narrower than those original conversations that we had talked about. Okay, thank you. I was just, I was curious. Yep. 
the culvert that's in there now is going to have has the same flow as this structure is going to have the this structure will uh probably two and a half times the amount of flow that that existing one has if it if it really had to see it this it, it's kind of a unique hydraulic situation with berlin pond and some of the some of the things that are happening in this this drainage area but this this new structure is much larger and it has much more hydraulic capacity <laughs> this is this is a little bit maybe off the off the topic of the engineering thing but i actually had a uh, a taxpayer reach out to me who's very active in the community and they asked um about the financing after they saw it on their ballot and and they asked about the with the army reserve and any the, the buildings over there with with the army reserve building there that's that's not a, an egress they're concerned about where we would be able to maybe ask them for any funding or anything like that is it tom or, or ben i'm sorry tom, tom's probably better equipped to answer that than i am at this point we could ask anybody i don't think they're going to say yes <laughs> oh, i probably not but i was just curious how if we knew how that worked with facilities like that nearby and what what the actual process or procedure was surrounding it i know the the hospital's very anxious for that road uh the culvert to be replaced and um their set their their response to me on similar questions to them is it's it's a, it's a town uh asset and, it, and it's a town responsibility so we don't know how it works on with specifically i just didn't know if the army corps engineers or anything just any of it that's all i'm asking so but we don't know is what you're saying i ha i have not asked anybody my sense is that they'll say the same thing that the hospital did robert have you ever heard of anybody working with a municipality like that in any way shape or form from a governmental capacity like that um i never have uh it, i'm trying to think if there's no i i, I never have and and uh I, i'm not aware of any other funding options that would be available either they don't they don't have a whole lot of assets there at that that uh, armory do they that I don't know. It was just raised by a taxpayer, and I thought it actually sounded yeah. like a valid question. And I wanted to address it. Yeah. The only thing I was thinking is, I mean, you never see a whole lot of uh, vehicles there. They're kind of spread out. Uh, you got that armory there, and uh, by the Fisher on Fisher Road, you got one down in uh, Waterbury. You've got one in Richmond, but none of them have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, of assets in their parking lot to, to move. Um, anything else on this, Robert? I don't believe so. I think, um, I think we're on, on track and, and hopefully um, there's been enough outreach with everyone in town to understand, you know, how important it is. I'm sure you guys have uh, received calls and stuff from concerned citizens who are interested in getting this replaced as soon as possible. So hopefully the, the vote goes well and we can keep moving forward. Okay, well, thank you, Robert. Anything else on this, Tom? No, I'll put yeah. I have some of the, on, the, on the next item here too, Brent. Okay. Okay, thank you, Robert. Thank you. Uh, Fisher Road Culvert Financing. So I sent in your packets um, this letter from the Vermont uh, Economic Development Authority basically outlining the terms of their agreement with us for, uh, for the town for lending. We were waiting for this for, for the select board's review. The question that was outstanding with the, um, with the bank was because we need a, a town-wide vote uh, uh, granting the select board the, the right to the ability to, to do this project because uh, it's over a five-year term. Um, 
uh, we, we've, we've asked the bank, do we need to have that positive vote before we can apply? And their answer was no. And then the, after they answered that, they issued this, this terms letter. So uh, if the select boards of the, of the mine, um, I'd like to get that application filed with the Vermont Economic Development Authority. They don't have a lot of funds in it and I'd hate to lose our, lose our ability to borrow at this relatively low interest, interest rate rate. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't know how to how to phrase that one. Um, so we're we're simply seeking to uh, approve the application, right, Tom? Um, uh, yeah. Is, yeah. To, to I, submit the I, submit the application to the, to the just for approval, so that we can secure the funds should the taxpayers vote for it. I would I would move that we uh, and make the motion that we allow the town to cross, submit the application of the Vermont Economic Development Authority in the amount of uh, 1,063,000. The screen just got shut down on me. Uh, <laughs> call it one, you know, up to $1,100,000 for the Fisher Road Culvert Project. I second that motion. Thank you, any Justin. For, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so there you go, Tom. Um, let's see here. Uh, development on Route 302 Town Town Fair Tire Center, the sidewalks. So I last meeting, you may recall that the Development Review Board is hearing tomorrow an application to redevelop. Um, the steakhouse and which is on which fronts route 302 the z our new zoning regulations um, require that any properties that uh, front 302 that are redeveloped have a sidewalk component the um, at the last meeting we had a draft maintenance agreement where the developer would in effect uh, be required to do the, the maintenance of the, that sidewalk rather than the, than the town. And the select board asked for uh, a beefier agreement, which I sent out, which uh, uh, an agreement that was reviewed by Bob Wernick who, uh, as a PE or was a PE uh, for a professional engineer uh, and is also the chair of the development review board. and. Um, uh, uh, Brian Carnes from DeWolf Engineering and myself came up with that beefier agreement. And the three of us think that that uh, likely would have answered the select board's uh, questions and concerns about maintenance of the sidewalk uh, on the go forward. So if, if you have no issues with it, I'd ask the, the select board to agree to that maintenance, maintenance agreement. Uh, and sign it tonight. We would get the applicant for that project to sign it tomorrow, and it would be be uh, filed with the uh, development review board as uh, part of the the uh, written testimony for that project. Hear a motion. What was the what was the beefier part of the agreement, and how did they address deterioration? I'm, I apologize, I didn't get an opportunity to review that, Tom. So if you could just yeah, let me, give let us me, a high-level overview, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, let me just pull it up here real quick. So it's where we put in here. Um, the under the now therefore the second paragraph under under one if when when the time of the day when uh, snow should be removed we said any uh, snow that uh, is accumulated by 6 a.m. 6 a.m. would have to be removed by noon the um, uh, maintenance uh, of remove uh, if there's any debris like trash or or grass growing onto the sidewalk that they would need to cure that in in eight hours. We talk about cracks larger than 18, uh, well, excuse me, one eighth of an inch. 
or if or if a crack is is um, becomes uh, elevated over or cracks where it becomes a trip hazard that they must repair those those cracks within 72 hours. And then on the replacement of the sidewalk, we said um, that uh, the re replacement would need to be done uh, if uh, if normal repairs can uh, cannot repair the, the sidewalk. So that, that paragraph there is where the beef is. And, and is there anything as far as recourse written into this, if they don't follow that? I know that based on my experience on this board, um, there's been issues with recourse, uh, or maybe not issues, but is there, what recourse is written into it if they don't follow that? That well, would be that, my other concern. They would, they would be in violation of their zoning permit. And if we, we have issues, then you could go after them with respect to that. How so? If you could uh, null and void their zoning permit and they couldn't operate a tire facility there. So you're, what? I don't believe that to be true. What you're saying is we could shut the business down if they were in violation of the sidewalk. I don't, I don't think we would ever be able to do that. So I was just curious how it works. However, however the, the select board has the ability to to take action against somebody who's who's violating permit. Right, so as our zoning administrator, I'm just asking you how that would work along with this policy being written in for this, 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 this company. There's two, there's two cures in the zoning regulations. One, there is a municipal ticketing um, that's written in the, the 2019 uh, zoning regulations that in, a, in effect allows a, an officer of the town to, to write Municipal tickets—it's—it's it's a civil violation, um, and it has an uh, escalating monetary penalty, depending on how the select board writes that piece of of that. So, so that's one, and and the other one is, is you could you could take uh, anybody who's in, in a uh, violates a, a, a zoning permit, you could take them to in uh, to court through through your uh, through legal mechanisms that the, that the town has to cure the problems. So based based on our previous conversation, we have all of these in place, and and, and I'm not I'm not doubting that we have all these mechanisms there, the authority to do so and try to. Um, but I'd really like to urge the, the borough and select board to come up with a way to do it because isn't that why we had um, a few people attend meetings earlier in this year? That was because we're trying to figure out how we successfully enforce our zoning. So we can spend the time to write these things and have these procedures in place, but and then to like do it yourself and put it on paper. We realized we didn't have the ability you're cutting out, Justin. We've had conversations prior about not being able to enforce some of our zoning and how to go about doing it. And I know I'm opening up a can of worms here, but to me, that's a huge piece. So we can say we have these mechanisms or we have these policies in place, but, and I agree with the agreement that we have, I just wonder how the town would actually enforce it because as a board or, or as a municipality, I don't think we've really addressed the issues of enforcement of zoning violations. Dear, Tom, were you a part of those meetings or was it just Dana? Maybe Brad would know better. Uh, I don't recall those, Justin, no. The, the, the meetings, uh, with um, for the civil penalties, I can't remember the the scale, but I agree. Uh, what Tom said rings true that it was on us. It was uh, 
um, if there were out, of, if they were not in compliance, there was a, uh, there was a, uh, I can't remember what the, the dollar amount for the fine was, but it just kept escalating until it got to be where it was somewhat uh, large. Uh, it was, uh, I can't remember if it was by the week or by the day, but it, it went up fast. No, and my, I remember my it was a tier system. My yeah. recollection of the conversation though was that the, the select board in the town doesn't currently have a procedure set in place for addressing violations in zoning or any of these. And so we have a penalty system in place and sure it does escalate, maybe it does go up, but we don't have a process to actually collect on it and a procedure in place. And that's my number one concern. Well, well, in the zoning regulations, there are procedures for violations of zoning. Um, I, I, I don't. It I don't, was we. I don't we have had, a memorized chapter and verse. No, but. no, I, I get it, Tom. And I, but we had had even like uh, enforcement of everything. Uh, we had had Trevor Whipple come in at one point. And yes, him. that last and, last summer. Yeah. Yeah, and just the process on how we would go about enforcing these. And, and I feel like if we don't have a tight system, we, we have spent some time and we need to have these in place because it's important for the future development of the community. But we are, it's no good to have a law written in place that eventually nobody knows you, can, you can't enforce it or it doesn't even matter. So to me, my big concern isn't necessarily this particular policy. Uh, as much as it is set, making sure we have a, a, a future policy set and a plan and a process and a procedure for enforcement of our zoning, because what good is our zoning if we don't have that in place? I know that it's all written in there, but we had some serious collection or some serious recourse issues, as I recall. And I, I think it sounded like you and Flo maybe were on that and understand Brad was definitely there. And I know Angelina was as well. Um, so I, to, to me, it's like one of those things that we've kind of just not worried about that we need to get a grasp on, especially as we're doing this new town center and everything else. We need to make sure that we have that in place. I agree 100%. I, um, we should take that in, in the future. That being well, said, I would move to approve the town fair tire uh, proposed sidewalk maintenance agreement. You're a second? Um, I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? Um, Vince, yep. take in, uh, if you would, could you look into that? Yep, I've got a note, Brad, I'll, I'll take a look at that. I'll talk to Tom as well, see what we have on file um, and again, I'll come back with some some thoughts and recommendations on what we find. Yeah, Ev, um, you can put that on your to-do list. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anything else on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. So that's town fair. Uh, no appeals pending certification. As far as uh, listers. So that document was sent out to the select board in advance. Uh, there was no uh, outstanding appeals and the listers that asked that you uh, the select board sign off on their letter to that effect. Is that for the whole board to sign or they, you need a uh, motion for the chair to sign? Um, uh, let me look here real quick. You have it in your pile there, Brad. I don't have it oh. in my pile here. I, I think it is for the whole board to sign. Okay. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, so we'll take it, uh, a motion on that, please.
I'd make a motion, but I don't have it in front of me. Tom, if you can I bring it up I, on I don't think I heard it clearly. I, I could bring it up here. Hold Thank on you. I move to approve the no appeals pending certificate. I hear you. I move to approve the no appeals certificate. Here a second. I second the motion. Thank you, Justin. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. The uh, we'll skip the liquor licenses for right now and uh, virtual pre-town meeting date and time. Tom, have you heard from Rosemary? Uh, this is Vince. Vince's deal here. Oh, uh, Vince. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Well, I, I did talk to uh, to to Rosemary a little bit about that. Um. I guess the original date was scheduled for the Saturday, the 27th for this. Um, the only concern that they, uh, that she expressed was the fact that the ballots are already out. People are probably already receiving them. Um, and that's good. They thought that was kind of late. Um, I, I don't think there's a, I looked to see if there was anything and asked her about the, the notice period as well. Uh, I didn't get, I didn't find anything and get an answer back on that one um, as far as uh, warning the meeting um, for that. Uh, so I, I think at, at this point, um, my thoughts and recommendation is to stick with the original date of Saturday the 27th. Yep. <clears throat> okay. And Rosemary was good with that. Uh, sure. <laughs> there was okay. there, there was some reluctancy there. Um, yeah. You know they they obviously they felt the sooner that we could have it, the better. Yeah, but you still have that. You still have the warning period. Correct. It was already warned for the twenty seventh. So. Well, I think some of what. The issue is is not it's the uh, informational town meeting the the going through the agenda the videos we had talked about people doing I'd sent out emails we had had prior discussion about it and were mandated to do it and I feel like that the concern is now that so much time's passed since we've done this or made the decision and especially the night before town meeting with all the absentee ballots that we'll receive this year. You know, it, it is a little bit late and, and, you know, what we had talked about potentially doing a, a month and a half ago would have been much more informative to the voters. I don't know. I mean, everybody was involved in that. So I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I mean, people need to know what they're voting on and have some conversation and they're not going to wait until the day before town meeting to send their absentee ballots back. And I, I think that's a genuine concern. And I feel like the, we've dropped the ball on that. It's just my two cents, but I brought it up a couple of times and there's not much else I can do. Well, the, 27th, the, the 27th is uh, what, four days before town meeting? Five? That's a Saturday, so it's four days yeah part, part of the driver is that this this meeting had to be held within 10 days of town meeting yeah so, so you couldn't we weren't we weren't able to do it too far in advance right but we were able to put together an informative video going through all of the all the items on the agenda and then we could have played that which is one of the emails i sent as a recommendation going through all of those items voters and then having the question and answer so i'm actually i wish we had done that i wish we had talked about it a month and a half ago when i brought it up well, as i understood it the okay, uh i have a, I have a the, go ahead go ahead angelina um didn't get any emails so i don't know on with the email system but i'm not getting emails i don't i don't know what's happening but uh that's concerning to me 
Um, and I also just want to say, I think that the mail system right now is, you know, lagging because of COVID and I think that four days is sufficient um, to make decisions and mail in their ballots. I, to be honest, that's just my thoughts. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I, I agree with that to some degree, Angelina. I'm not going to completely disagree, but I think there's a lot of people that the day they get the ballots in the mail, uh, in an effort not to uh, forget about them, put them aside or anything like that, they're going to fill them out and send them back anyway. So typically speaking, four days would probably be absolutely enough, but we're going to get a substantially high number of return ballots uh, probably prior to even town meeting this year that was my concern and i and you're i've already filled mine out so i i i prayed about well the i thought part of that justin was that the uh the informational part had to be interactive it did, but part of what I had brought up was prior to the interactive meeting was the fact that we would go down through everything on the ballot, have a discussion about it, allow people, if, you know, have, have a brief, it's kind of like if you're running for select board or whatever, have somebody send in a paragraph on, you know, why is Kellogg Hubbard, uh, Kellogg Hubbard Library asking for this amount? Why is this organization asking for this amount? Why is the Berlin Fire Department asking for this amount? And let, it, let them know how they came up with this number and how it was supportive of the town. But we, we didn't even give these people an opportunity to do so. And I brought it up a couple of times. I, I wish we had. That's all I can say. And I think it's too late now. Just go ahead. Just a quick question. How, how many people do we expect to attend the pre-town meeting at this point? At pre-town meeting? Yeah. It's it's different. I mean, it's usually it's relatively small numbers, small. Um, but I think given the fact that when I spoke to Rosemary and Corinne, in fifty percent of the typical voting population prior to making the decision as a board uh, to to try and include ballots mailed out to everybody along with the school board, four hundred plus tax residents or voters had requested for absentee ballots, which is substantially larger than normal. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's, a, it's something we needed to address. And, and I apologize for that as, as I just apologize. I don't even know what to say to the taxpayers for that. Hopefully they get all the information they need. If not, I don't know. Like reach out to Vince Conti maybe. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Okay, anything else on this, uh, Vince? No, uh, I've got nothing else on this one. Okay. Are you setting a date? Well, I would think uh, the 27th. That's what it was warned as. I'm a little confused. I hesitated saying anything, but why can't we just at the next meeting go over each ballot item and, and read it off so everyone's aware of what it is? And if we want to comment on it, comment on it. But at least it'll be out there way ahead of the meeting. Um, I, I don't think it, you know, at this point, you could just read down the list of articles. And if anyone wants to talk about them or knows about them, we could bring it up. But it wouldn't take more than 15 or 20 minutes. And then people could go find the video online and watch it later if they wanted to. But at least and it would you, be out there. And you could invite, like, the, the fire department to come in and say something quick if they want to about a reduction in their budget if they knew about it or how would we do that yeah that's that's fine i think we could just let each each group know that we were going to be talking about it next week seems, so reason, we seems reasonable that known to all of the berlin residents how i mean so i would think that you'd be able to so utilize, what kind of notice would be to let people know to attend them i think Angelina, I think what John's saying is not necessarily that this would be our interactive meeting, but this would address the concerns that I just spoke about where getting the information out in a fast process, or maybe I'm wrong, John, you can correct me, um, but it wouldn't 
mean, we have your typical town or your meeting warnings. And so you could do it that way and it would address that. Uh, but it would also, I mean, two weeks away. So we'd, we'd satisfy all of our warning requirements, correct? Yeah, and then, I, I think so. And then, and then people, people with resources like Front Porch Forum and Corinne's email blast would probably would be able to have access to the video for further review later on. Or they go to, you know, work on Thunder River Council of the Arts, you know, check out the Berlin Select Board. I think that's a good idea. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. So who, who's gonna produce this video? We're doing it right now. It's on Zoom, right, John? <laughs> Seems that way to me. We could just, That's what I thought. We could just record the the, the meeting, How the did... of the meeting and post a link on the website. I mean, I, I don't think it needs to be anything. I don't think there's gonna be anyone that, I, not anyone, but I don't think there's going to be that many people to watch it, but at least it's there if someone wants to. It, it's there as a resource that people can file through should they want access and information. It doesn't require a tremendous amount of resources other than what we're already doing, and it addresses that concern, correct? So... So can I, can I try to summarize it and make sure uh, I understand sure. it? Please do. Okay. So, <laughs> so at the next select board meeting, have uh, have on the agenda, basically a ballot review to just to go through the items, give a little bit of information on each one, take a cut of that video, probably get it out there to front porch forum and in Corinne's email at least uh, as an informational piece, and then follow up with the interactive meeting on the twenty seventh. That pretty well that's, sum it up. I, yeah, I mean, I, I <laughs> it makes sense, doesn't it? It does. Well, it, well, excuse then, me. Excuse me. That your next select board meeting is March first, the day before town meeting. <laughs> pretty valid right. point. <laughs> the twenty the twenty seventh is Saturday, um, which is before that. Before that. <laughs> So that's four days ahead of the of uh, town meeting. Well, there goes that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So this was basically a couple meetings ago. Yeah, basically yeah. the the pre-town meeting is worn on the 27th. Um, Paul Gillies will probably go down through the list of the articles, like he always does. And uh, the only trouble I see is that, uh, or actually it shouldn't be a trouble, uh, just get, just send a email to the um, people who are, have uh, articles in the morning to, that there's a Zoom meeting for this and they'll have taken, if they wanna be there, they can be there to take and uh, uh, tell us why we should be taking, uh, tell the voters why they should be uh, voting to, uh, Give them money. Is that about right? So, it, it was, from what I can see, it was just leave it as it was worn for the twenty seventh. See who show, see who comes on to the Zoom meeting. Unmute. Flow. So, are, is, are we saying that we can go ahead and create a link and put it on Front Porch Forum for people um, to attend that meeting? Well, you can take and you can take and put out to attend the meeting on the twenty seventh, and then once that's done, you can take and link uh, uh, from the um, the web the town's website to that meeting. You can do that, can't you? I, I'm not in the computer, so I'm assuming yeah. you can do that. 
Yes, Brad, you can do that. So that would take and satisfy everything. Anything else on this? Do, does the select board want to weigh in on what time that was or just keep it part where it was originally worn? I would say keep it as it was originally worn. I mean, it kind of hard okay, to change that's it. Good. That's good. Thank you. Kind of hard to change it now. Does Berlin, uh, the town of Berlin have a Facebook page? A what, what page? Yes. I, who, yeah, I believe, I know that we do, but I don't know who manages it. Is anybody else? Corinne. That's what I thought. So another idea is to go ahead and put it on the Facebook page and then it can be shared. The town doesn't actually have a Facebook page. Corinne has her own Facebook page that she has, she invites members in the community to look at her Facebook page. But we do not have one that's, that is our own. Uh, the last person that did have one that was our own was Jeremy Hansen. He was the one managing that, but then when he left, that disappeared. So someone is still managing a Facebook page called Berlin, Vermont, posting stuff for the town and mm. links about the town. Really? Okay, so maybe it, maybe it's still Jeremy then. But I do know Corinne does have one, but I think she calls it social media. So my idea is just that, uh, um, I don't know, I could, I could share it to that page and then it could go about wherever it goes, but um, that's just an idea to get it out. I'm, yeah, um, I'm looking at it now, Diane, it's got 953 members. It's the unofficial Berlin Vermont page. Unofficial. That's Okay. That's run. I knew by, I wasn't. Uh, man, I know I wasn't maintaining one. So okay. Yeah, that's run by uh, Corinne. It, okay. Yeah. And she calls it what? She just calls it Berlin. Berlin, Vermont. Okay. I thought she had a different name for it. Okay. Anything else on this? Hearing nothing. Um, minutes from December 30th, 2020, and January 6th, 2021, and February 1st, 2021. I make the motion to approve the December 30th, 2020 minutes as presented. Second. There a second. John did. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, motion on the minutes from January 6, 2021. I also make a motion to approve the January 6, 2021 minutes as presented. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. And February 1st, 2021. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes for February 1st, 2021. Here's a second. I'm sorry, I was just catching up on the, uh, just finishing reading them, so. Second. Low second, Brad. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion on this? 
When did the when did those minutes come in, Tom? Friday, and I sent them out to you guys on Friday. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, well, I I have some comments. I mean, there, there's certain parts that are fairly thorough on the on the public comments, but then when we actually talk about the discussion about the vast application, I mean, there was a lot that was brought to light towards the end of the meeting. Um, like not, like we have a public board not, not taking minutes and not holding votes and not um, acting, you know, following open meeting law, quite frankly. Um, and, and that's fine if they're advisory only, but I think in my view, we've been, give, we'd been giving them quite a bit of responsibility for a board that's just advisory to tell us, you know, what we should be doing from a conservation standpoint. I mean, we've almost uh, let them go a little too far um, in, in their duty, um, just based on what they said that their role was. So. You know, none of that, none of that's captured at the, the end of the minutes. Um, but, you know, we, we do have quite a bit of thorough, he said, she said in the beginning from the public comment, so. So do, can we review the, uh, review the, the Zoom meeting recording and then have the minutes amended to correct that, John? Well, as long as, long as the minutes are posted, um, Within five days, um, we've met the, the requirement there. The within five days of what? The meeting. Um, what I would say is uh, we can put this off till next select board meeting and approve them then. And everybody can have their chance to uh, write out their amendments to them. Can we ask whoever does the minutes to review the the footage or the? We're paying uh, someone to do this, right? right. Yeah. So they they should review the 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 Zoom meeting recording that we have or the Orca file and be able to do that for us, right? I mean, yeah. I don't I don't I don't have a tremendous I don't have three extra hours. I think that meeting was to totally review it, but I know there was some, a lot of content omitted and it was nobody's fault, like John mentioned. Yeah. Well, we can take in, uh, we can have the, have the uh, secretary review it. So consensus, wanna put this off till next meeting? I would agree to that. I definitely that gives her time to do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Flo, well, I thought you'd have that up by now. Oh, well, you're so good at it. Come on, Flo. <laughs> I'm gonna defer to one of you because I That's was trying so to pull it up and it's not there. So unless Tom can put right. it on my screen, which would be appreciative. Otherwise I'll defer to one of you nice folks. Well, why don't we take and do this? I make, I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21-16 for payroll from January 17th, 2021 to January 30th, 2021 paid on February 3rd, 2021 in the amount of $47,810.29. Payroll warrant 21-17 for payroll from January 31, 2021 to February 13th, 2021, paid on February 17th, 2021 in the amount of $45,319.06. Payable war warrant 21G17 with checks 20899 to 2935 
in the amount of $64,452.43. January reconciled bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission and water division and January budget status report, trial balance and delinquent tax report. Did I get it all? Yep. Thank you, John. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. Uh, liquor licenses. So we need to go into the Liquor Commission and approve the licenses for China Moon, Walmart, and Brockton Corporation Shaw's. Can we go through this the last time with the liquor board? Since we don't actually have one, we don't need to exit the select board meeting and enter the liquor commission meeting. Sure. We can just do it all in one. Sure. I make a motion to approve liquor licenses for uh, Alpo VT Inc. Uh, doing business as China Moon Buffet, first class, Walmart Stores East LP, second class, and Brockton Corporation doing business as Shaw's Beer and Wine, number 7516, second class. Second. Uh, any problems with the... Uh... These licenses, Tom, or Vince? Any complaints from the police? None, none that I'm aware of. I'll also defer to Tom as well. None, not a, none that I've heard either. And it's it's Apollo. Oh, yeah. sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, round table uh, flow. Yes, I wanted to thank Angelina for her three years on the board. Wanted to make sure to do that because we won't be meeting again until the first and I don't want to forget. So thank you for all of your service, Angelina. And I also wanted to just say for all those who are listening in on the meeting that we have two people running for one uh, for three year seat. Um, one is Theron Lee Sleeper and also um, C. David Sawyer. And that's it for right now. I might have one more thing before we're off, but that's it for right now. Thank you. John. Thank you. Um, I, I was just going to, uh, I've been thinking about our last conversation with the, uh, the, the public members and the conservation committee members about the snow machine trail and the conservation management plan. And I think it would be a good idea if we go ahead and have a third party write the conservation management plan. Um, there was a lot of concern from the conservation committee that um, due to the, the, the short uh, staff list, not the short staff list, but the number of uh, committee members that they had that it was going to really be hard for them to be able to do that. And, you know, I think, you know, we, we brought this on, um, we as a select board and asked for um, this along with VAST. And I, I think that, you know, um, we should go ahead and put out a quick RFP and uh, go ahead and hire out that conservation plan and the conservation committee, the select board, uh, VAST, the mountain bikers can all go ahead and weigh in on it. Uh, but if we have a third party doing it, um, it can be more inclusive and we, we can all compromise and get, get all the pieces that we want um, and, and get something by June. Um, you know, my, my thought is, is, you know, just with the amount of work that, that probably won't be able to happen if we, if we don't do it that way. John, 
actually based on some of my thoughts and reflection on the, the prior meeting, uh, it sounded like Wendy Lynn didn't sound not overwhelmed, but it sounded like they felt quite tasked with everything that was in front of them. Um, when I, I was one, I think that I was thinking about the same thing. And I know, I know that Josh Walker's on here, uh, from the public. And one of the things that he, he was, he was been reached out to is to get other people involved. And I don't know, Josh, what role or what piece, um, you were asked to be involved in, but it, it sounded like we have a real opportunity here to be able to just congeal everybody, uh, especially by utilizing a third party in my perspective um, and, and, and eliminating the stress and maybe, maybe the Conservation Commission getting into the weeds on this uh, and being able to focus on what's important to the town if we did do something along those lines. I completely agree. Well, and I think, you know, going, going back and listening again, you know, uh, them being advisory, uh, you know, their part was advising us on the 10 acres that was considered highly val valuable conservation land, right? I mean, that was their advice to us is we wanna protect that uh, the very best we can. Uh, we know um, because of the other areas in the state, you know, if you go out to Plainfield, um, Vast runs right through the middle of a wetland. Um, and there's state of Vermont conservation signs all over the place. And there's, you know, uh, extremely uh, steep trails um, in Callis, Woodbury, Worcester, Barry, all over the place. And I just think that, you know, it would be better to, to have um, an outside company do this where the conservation committee can advise us on, you know, what should be in it, but at the end of the day, it should really be the select board um, up, approving that before it goes to the uh, Vermont Land Trust. I I agree. It doesn't it doesn't mean that there's any bias in any way, shape, or form. I just think it would break it down to the more mechanical piece of it. The, 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 so that moving forward again, kind of like I brought up with these boards earlier in the meeting, I don't know if you had been able to join us yet, John, uh, but the fact that we need to develop a system and a process and a procedure for all of these, I feel like that'll give the, the, the town, the municipality, the baseline that it needs to make future decisions without delay or procrastination that are very clear and defined for our resident. Yeah, I was uh, contacted by um, uh, Tom Willard and I think on behalf of Wendy, Wendelin and just for, uh, for advisory on um, what she should do uh, for approaching Vermont Land Trust. And, and, and in the past, we have already done this. We've. Uh, found the records in the town clerk's office that uh, Vermont Land Trust has already approved the snowmobile usage in the town forest. And they just want a management plan. And um, we, we drafted up a management plan and submitted it to, I'm not sure if it got to the board or if we submitted it to the um, conservation committee. But um, since then, they've dragged in wanting to do the mountain biking, the snowshoeing, the summer activities, the hunting, and in, in, in bulking that all in with our approval for um, opening a trail. Yeah. So and, one of your concerns is the fact that you feel like each uh, outdoor recreation activity is not addressed individually, it's addressed as a whole, which I can see where that might be a concern. Is that true, Josh? Um, it's a concern, I'm sure, with the Conservation Commission, but um, since the biking trails have always already been there for a number of years, the hiking, the snowshoeing, the hunting has all been there for a number of years. And then we asked for permission to open up an existing trail that was already there in the past. It, it comes to this, a big uh, snowball effect. Yeah. It, I just think, you know, I think with, with so much on everyone's plates, it'd be best just to um, do an RFP and have an outside uh, company consult with all of us, you know, take in, information from the conservation committee, take information from VAST and put, bring, 
bring a management plan amendment to the um, select board for approval before sending to Vermont Land Trust. It seems simple, straightforward. Everyone gets to you know weigh in, and and in the end, the select board will look it over and decide if it's right for the town. You, you um, know, we, we we submitted a generous plan to the conservation board of going up and maintaining that throughout the year, maintaining all the water bars, the brush, building a new bridge for them, and um. And, it, and I just don't know why it didn't go anywhere from there. I understand them wanting to get a plan for the whole scope of what their use is for them, of everybody for the mountain, but why now? Why, why now? Josh. It's because we asked. Josh, I can understand your frustration. Um, and and I, I understand where you're coming from, especially because you're participating in potentially one activity that you can't currently do throughout that area. And I know you participate in multiple other activities that are up there. And it does feel, it does seem like I get from your perspective where uh, this one concern got lumped into everything. And I kind of feel like it did myself on the board. I definitely feel like it did. And so I think what we're trying to accomplish here is is a clear defined uh, plan that 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 somebody from an outs another advisory a professional firm that's not tasked by volunteers which are probably unfortunately overworked by everything we already have and unable to put in the time just like I know you've dedicated hundreds of hours to the the proposal that Vass put in and and all of that I think that. I think that what we're trying to do is accomplish a very uh, personalized for the town of Berlin uh, proposal to, well, we want to put it out to RFP for this to be written specifically for the Berlin town forest. And in there, it'll actually address each maybe individual. That was my next question was, will it address individual recreation, uh, just the snowmobiles, just Cross country, just snowshoeing. How how do you propose that that would be done, John? Based on that request. Well, I, I guess my my thought was was uh, we'd we'd put together a simple statement of work of updating the current current plan, adding a link to to it. Um, you know, and Vince probably knows how to do this better than I do. <laughs> But you know, really, just you know, outlining, you know, bringing it up to date with these sections and you know around, um, you know, mountain biking and uh, yeah. snow machining. Um, you know what? So the more I, the more I listened in, you know, it, it it just became clear that there there's a communication issue going on here because we've been talking about this for over six months and the things that we've brought up and the things that have been discussed have come full circle and were again brought up as major concerns at the last meeting and I'm sitting there you know shaking my head saying you know I you know to, to these people these are real concerns and, and I can appreciate that but I feel like we've brought them forward and answered them whether it be a steepness of a trail or Hey, did you know that um, uh, cross country skiers actually like a pack trail um, and snow machine trails more than trying to drudge their own trail up the mountain? Um, or, you know, in other towns, walkers actually prefer a well groomed trail um, rather than trying to pack through the snow themselves. Um, you know, I'm wondering where you guys will draw the line. Is it going to be bird watchers are going to need to make sure they don't bring any bird feed up there and seed the ground with an invasive species? You know, I think you're going to have an agreement separate with every different person. The snowmobile club is only going to be using that area for one, one of the trails, one of many trails that are up there right. for four months maximum out of the year. I do feel that the VAS Club has been penalized here um, uh, to some degree through this process um, because, you know, if you go online, you can see the mountain bike 
uh, Association has maps of all the mountain bike trails up there. Um, and those are being able to be used by all everybody, right. you know, skiers, hikers, bikers, snowshoers, but and snowmobilers won't go on those trails, so don't worry about that. Right. So, so maybe, maybe you know, depending on what the what all of you think, um, you know, is that something we could have Vince work on for next time an RFP uh, to send out to uh, solicit bids for a management plan upgrade or update for? I'll be volunteer to do it. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna say, who are you gonna take and target your uh, RFP to? There's, man, know, there's um, got to be management firms or resources on a state level that'll handle this. Um, but I was kind of wondering if you were looking at like a forester or something like that. No, I think it would have to be somebody specific to manage properties and conserve properties. It would, not specific to it, but with a, an expertise in that area, certainly. I mean, there's that we're not the only conserved land in the state of Vermont, so I'm sure somebody else helps write these management plans for towns, municipalities. We could probably ask the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns if if they are aware of uh, firms that do this. It, Good idea. Yeah, no, let, let, me, uh, let me take a look at that. At, uh, and see uh, who's out there, right? And I'll uh, I'll make some recommendations to the board on so uh, what we can find out there for resources. So for the next meeting, just to clarify, so I'm I'm clear on this. What we're asking Vince to do is find out who in the area or who who can help us with this management plan for the town forest, and then. Are we also asking for any, uh, if we do an RFP, a proposed RFP to include just a generalization or are we asking it to include specific features? The, um, the, the only- one of, my, yeah. one of my concerns with the existing management of that town forest that really, really, I don't, I don't think it's ever been brought up or I've even brought it up or anything, but it's one of my concerns is that on this heavily conserved land that we keep hearing so much about. I do know that there's some personal cut in mountain bike trails that people utilize and continue to utilize that aren't part of the, the actual trail map that aren't part of the proposal. Um, and, and yet the town, the conservation commission doesn't appear to have that, bring that to the select board's attention or or, I, or maybe they're not aware of it. Maybe I'm totally off on that, but I, I believe it's been addressed in meetings prior. Um, and so we're just gonna let people that go, wanna go ahead and use it uh, at their own discretion and not go through the proper channels, utilize it without penalty or, or following a process. Yet we have an organization that's willing to partner with the town and do great things for the forest potentially, uh, trying to go through the proper channels only to be penalized. So I just want to make sure that that's something we address in this process as well. Uh, just, just one thing, and maybe I can address this to Vince, is I know that Barry Town has Barry Town Forest, and there's also bike trails and millstone bike trails go in there. Yep. And, and it's there, yep. but with the Snowmobile Club as well. And maybe they have some plan um, already written that, that we can go by. You know, because that's a shared use day ski, snowshoe, you know, they have the Frisbee golf, and that's all yeah. in uh, Barry Town Forest. Yeah, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those, I think, throughout the state that we can, you know, I can take a look at and see who they've used or how they've done it as well. Um, yeah, or, or just use their plan as, or, you know, just um, duplicate their plan. As a baseline. Where we yeah. don't have to muddy it up so much and take so much time from people, you know. Yeah, I think, you know, we've been talking about this, Josh, and you know this for for three the three years that I've been on the board, we've been talking about this. And, I, and I think several, a few years ago, I mentioned that maybe we should have a collaboration with other towns and other boards to kind of figure this out. I'm a huge fan of snow machining, snow revealing. I I love it, um, I, you know, 
I have some questions. Why is our forest, you know, conserved? Uh, you know, what is behind them not wanting to have a snow in well, our well, forest? What, what What is there needing to be protected so badly? But I, I think that it's time for us to to give people who like to snow machine um, a trail that is permanent. And I mean, this has been going on for years, like I said, and it's, it's just time now um, for this to get figured out. So I, what I would like to see is um, a collaboration between towns, you know, a trail that's gonna be maintained and, um, and be a permanent fixture and, to satisfy everybody. Yeah, and I agree. And there, there's been studies done on the environmental impact of snowmobiling. And you know, it must not be much if there's like 5,000 miles of snowmobile trails in the state of Vermont. And um, the, the hiking and biking is a lot more of an impact on the environment than a snowmobile is. And, and another thing I wanted to let you guys know is um, I've already gotten every other landowner's written permission there's 19 different landowners between the, between going from Shaw's, which Shaw's is a signed landowner to, for, to use their property, all the way to uh, Barrows Road in uh, Northfield. So there's 19 landowners that have already approved the trail to go on their private property. And it's the, the town forest is the only place that we don't have permission for yet. So, so I guess. So I, my, I, so my question is why, and I guess my that's question the is biggest why. question. What is the reason? Yes. So the reason, the reason's been brought up, Angelina, a couple of times in some of the prior meetings, and it's things like, um, just the grade is too much. Which I personally have been snowmobiling a little bit this year, and I've been down some pretty steep grades, and I haven't seen any safety issues, and I've been up on about you know shared usage um and how to incorporate that and i've been on some trails personally where i've met probably 60 cross-country skiers and they were thrilled that were there and i actually saw the cross-country ski club grooming the trail with the snowmobile right down by the like next to the snowmobile trail um so to me i think the biggest thing is, number one honestly is uh fear of the unknown I think that currently, if a lot of the, the people that are voicing opinions uh, are maybe a little bit nervous about not realize, or maybe they don't realize the, the, the level of professionalism, uh, it's not the snowmobile clubs out there that it used to be maybe, or the perception that it used to be. I mean, if you price out some of these new snowmobiles, they're $20,000 a piece for a brand new one. Um, you're not talking somebody just ready to smash one into a tree because they're out doing whatever, just acting out of control. You're talking, and I think that, but that's not, I, I don't think that's the visual, visualization some, of the, some individuals perceive simply based on the unknown. Um, so I think some of it's a little bit of education um, and some of it's actually not being, I mean, you got, listen, we all own that land. It's not just the people that, snowshoe or cross-country ski there's a portion of people in the community that own it that are snowmobilers and they have the right to use it too and i, I feel like that might have gotten overlooked but ultimately it's the fear of the unknown well and and i think i agree with you about the fear of the unknown justin and reflecting back and looking back um the number of people that were extremely concerned about opening up berlin pond that lived around the pond uh, for the reasons of traffic, for the reasons of increased people on the road, all of those things, um, you know, it was, it was an unknown at that point. Um, and I can tell you, you, you know, some of my neighbors now were, were dead set against it. And now they're users of the pond. Um, they love the pond. They love to kayak out there. They, they love to do, do these things. Um, and they realized it really, really wasn't that bad. Um, another concern that we heard was, you know, the increased traffic on the on the road, and we we heard 
we, you all heard the same thing with Berlin Pond being opened up. Um, but in the time that I've been in Berlin, the only complaint that I've heard about public complaint that I've heard about traffic on the road was when a, to a, a car that was in the road was towed, uh, that was a, a walker. Um, so, you know, pe people adjust and get used to it. And, uh, you know, um, it's, it is a busy area and, you know, we all have to be careful, but there's many safety things that we can do that I've been observing in other towns, um, such as posted speed limits on Brookfield Road. Right now, there's not one, um, which means it's 50 miles an hour, according to the state police. Uh, not one posted speed limit there. Um, there's no, no parking signs along the sides of the road. Um, there's a number of things that we can do to help mitigate the issues. And I think we can address all of those things, but I don't think we ought to penalize the, the VAST club when uh, I, I think there's a, a large majority of, or not a majority, but a, a large group of people in Berlin that do snow machine and would love to be able to access um, other areas and not just drive down, um, you know, a lot of pavement to, to get out of town. And um, I think, I think, you know, we, uh, we all, uh, we all pay for the land by deferring the taxes on it, by not having the taxes on it, by it being town land. And if we can open it up and let more people enjoy it, especially during the winter when there's so little to do, I think we should, but um, I'll, I'll be quiet now, Vince. <laughs> Okay, well, this, this, this all started. I, I mean, I, I'm in that. I, I think it's time to put this to rest. I think that it's, so, you know, it's been ongoing okay. for long enough and it needs to, uh, it, it needs to come to a rest. And so it needs to be voted on and figured out. And that, you know, that's okay. It. So I just, just want to say this all started with a question Do you want? Um, do you want us to investigate having a third party write the um, update the um, management plan? <laughs> and I think the answer is yes. I do. That, that we want to make that investigation. Um, find out three or four people that we can get an RFP quote out to um, and what that's going to look like. Uh, and I think also um, I heard come up in conversation the depth of that. And I think we, again, to put it to rest, I think we need to go into depth on this management plan and cover all our bases um, and get a very comprehensive management plan that can satisfy everyone. Vince, Vince, one of my concerns would be in an effort not to penalize the, uh, the, the vast people that are currently requesting to use it. And we have plenty of other demographics that are currently allowed to use it. Yep. I would almost want to narrow that down uh, I think that if you read the deed, it says that from time to time, we'll create a new management plan. Um, but what I don't want to have happen is have somebody come in and say, it's going to take six more months to get one done by a third party. Um, I'd like to ask that, that, that we look for someone to specifically write a management plan dedicated to the use of snowmobile traffic on that property. And also, the overarching plan. Uh, uh, can I put something in? Is um, you, you know, and it just popped into my head was uh, going with like the Berry Town Forest. Like, um, if Vince could uh, contact them or contact some of these other towns, because there's there's it, it, almost every town in in a lot of the cities in the state of Vermont have snowmobile trails in them. So if we were just to contact uh, whether it be the select board of those towns. And, and see what they have for a plan for their snowmobile trail instead of uh, bringing in a, a third party. Like Angelina said, we've been in this for three years. You've gotten input from a numerous amount of people. I've given you over a hundred um, signatures of people that want this. And um, when I was joined in on the Zoom meeting, there was a lot of people that wanted to be on that meeting that couldn't attend it. And that's why I got the signatures. Um, and I think that that, that um, the signatures and the people that were in the Zoom meeting, you know, outweigh the people that don't really want to see it. And the people that don't really want to see it, you know, this, this um, town forest is for everybody. And um, 
I think that I really think that uh, the snowmobile trail should be able to go through. And I don't think it should be muddied up with a bunch of other, you know, people like uh, Justin saying them taking another six months of getting somebody else. I think that, um, you know, as a snowmobile club, we've already given them a management plan. And like I said, it was a generous plan. And um, if we could just come up with an agreement with the, with the conservation board and the select board, um, this should be able to go through. And, and I don't see why it should take until June to figure this out. Right. Well, I see where I see where you're going with this, Josh, especially given the, the bridge structure and things involved in this. Right, because we're going to uh, want to get materials, materials we, we, for that bridge. Yeah, and we're going to want to make sure if we're going to partner with somebody to help cover the cost of this. So maybe part of what you could do, Vince, along with the process that we just discussed was reach out. I, I don't think that I can't speak for the board, obviously, but obviously John's voiced his perspective. I think it's clear my perspective is that if there's a responsible way to utilize the property that we should accommodate every single resident for every single use that we can up there. Um, and I know that the, the snowmobile is supported by a tremendous amount of the population. Um, and, and so maybe we could reach out to these other municipalities because they must have conserved land not being, or there's not that much difference and ask them maybe what they would do or how they would handle it so that maybe even at the next meeting as an agenda item um it's possible that you could have some proposals that you know this is what barry town said they would do or this is what east montpelier what they said they would do or this is what palace said they would do and, and we can have some some true discussion on that and and if it's just real cut and dry based on what you get for feedback from that maybe maybe we don't need to rfp for a specific thing and we can, you know, say, well, we're comfortable making that decision and moving forward on this piece of it um period and but i i mean i, 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 I have we still need to we still need to have the the plan in place over review oh. done overall but yeah. is that what you're saying, Josh? Well, you know, I don't want to take up too, too much more of you guys' time. I know you spent a lot of time on this. There, there was one other thing where, you know, you gave the conservation board until June to come up with a plan, and that's still not an answer for us to have our trail. They got a plan, and then it's still the formalities of getting permission for the trail. And um, if, if we need, if we want VAST to grant money for a, a bridge that, that we that the the vast that the snowmobile club is going to have to pay for, we have to have that grant appl application in by May. So we're like a month beyond when our grant application can be paid for by vast. So because it, you know the the one bridge that I know the select board um, graciously said that they would pay for because it was going to be used by the town and owned by the town on Darling Road you were gonna pay for the materials and we were gonna supply all the labor, all the labor to build the bridge. And you guys were just, I gave you an itemized material list on how much it was gonna be. And it was came to, you know, close to three, that was $2,700. And you guys approved 3000 in case we needed to put a gate down at the bottom of the, the Darling Road to make sure that there was gonna be no trucks or Jeeps that got up there. Right. So, so, and and we also need to redo. There was there's like a little footbridge on Black Road that we need to uh, replace to get across with the trail groomer. That was going to be the um, full cost of the snowmobile club, and that's where we would need to file for a grant from Vast for that. So we are hoping we could get this done before June, more like before May, because we need oh, to have so a grant, grant application <laughs> by May. You need to have a finalized approval from the board or a finalized hard no from the board to in order to make a decision by the end of the well, e well, either that or, or we're going to have to scramble to try to come up with money from the actual private snowmobile clubs to fund the bridge. And then maybe next year we can apply for the grant to cover the, the, uh, the cost of the bridge. But if we could apply for the grant now, it, it's hard. These clubs don't have a lot of money. They just run on a wing and a prayer. You know, and it's a lot of volunteer work that goes into this. And so, 
So it sounds to me like with the timelines that we may have set for expectations as a board, um, in in th in thinking, I'm a layman to this. I don't know whether that, you know, what the, to me a June first timeline sounds reasonable. Um, but it but but when you put it in that, maybe we should we should also involve more people. Um, well, I wish I would have known this. We should have sped up the process. The you know, I wish I knew the conservation board was going to be. Um, dealing with in the, in the last meeting, there was nothing in the uh, agenda that that was going to happen or else I would have been um, present at the meeting. Well, I, that, that deadline was set in a prior meeting. Okay. Um, and then, in, and what I believe happened was in the public comment time, um, the, the, the conservation commission and some, some, supporters of not having motorized uh, recreation on that area uh, were present for the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it sounds to me like the, the point you're making is our timeline that we had originally set on the prior meeting um, for a June deadline and expectation. I believe it was the prior meeting. Uh, oh, I could I be wrong, but I believe what you're saying is that timeline just not realistic for the needs of a club and the support that the, the town would get from the club if we were to partner with them, correct? Well, I hope that, you know, you give someone a deadline of like begin the June 1st, they would have it done before May 31st or whatever, you know? Right, right. So, you but know? what you're saying is just, just the timeline we set for the plan and all that, which I think, I think we can probably fast forward a lot of that by putting this out to RFP. Sure. Yeah. So the, the yep. board can readdress the board should be able to readdress this timeline issue. And I, I, maybe that should be another, you know, Vince, when, when we come back with the proposals or the ideas for the proposals for the next meeting, we also have a, a topic on there. Uh, and we invite Bast in there to talk about these issues so that we can address these potential timeline mm -hmm. concerns yep. um, so that we can put together exactly what we're looking for because that's after all going to be part of the RFP. So, sure. I mean, obviously a May 1st deadline versus a June 1st deadline to a firm that's busy, it might mean whether or not they bid on it or well, whether- well, well, also, what about if, you know, Vince talks to Barry Town and he gets a form from them that says this, this, and this, and he gets one from East Montpelier and he gets one that's, from, from that's another. Part, that's part of what we've asked him to do at this yeah. point, I well, believe. Well, why can't we just take one of those at the next meeting and say, yep, that one fits just the guidelines, exactly what we need. That's going to be our management plan. Let's submit this to the conservation board and have them send it off to Vermont Land Trust. I think we may end up doing that. We'll have to have it as an agenda item in order to take action on it. Yeah. Um, so what we're asking, and, and I would personally prefer to do that in the interim to get things moving forward if it was in a way that was beneficial to, to the town um, without tying up expenses associated with hiring somebody so that everybody's not completely overwhelmed and tasked with the, the, this huge burden. You know, like so I, said, I think we're, we're, what we're going to ask them to do is exactly that. And hopefully Vince can come back to us with, with somebody that says, with somebody that says, this is exactly what we did and how we addressed it. This is how we addressed the slope. Maybe we have to make some minor alterations to it in order to approve it. Um, and then ultimately, I don't know that we need to send it to, uh, to the conservation commission for approval. We should probably get their input. Yep. And we could do so at the same meeting at the same time and ask them to be present for that. Should Vince come up with something like that? Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, the select board would be the ones that would uh, approve the management plan that we would then forward off. So their input as an advisory committee would be valued. Yep. We're not relying on their approval. So given, Josh, you're not completely off. I think that's a great idea. Not the, what I'm we're we've asked for them to do some research and maybe we could reach out vince to them as well and ask that they have a proposal on what they'd like to see for the so that we could look at that for the next select board meeting even 
Um, and, and, and I mean, I <laughs> just agree. I agree with Angelina. I want to get this over and done with and put it to bed. I'm, I'm done talking about it. And I, not in a negative way. Um, yeah. I think it's yeah. All positive. It's been too long. It needs to be addressed. Yep. To be done and dealt with. No. Thank you for your input, Angelina. Anything else, John? You're welcome, Josh. I see you guys, you know, have a, a, a good, solid plan. And I want to see you guys happy and do your snow machining. I, I know that if I could, I'd be out there too. So, you know, I, I, I want to see that happen for you. And unfortunately, I'm, I am leaving the board. Um, so I won't be working on that in June, but I, I would love to see for you guys to have that sooner than later. I think it's time to get this done. It's, it's been, it's been long enough and it keeps getting put off and enough. Um, well, I appreciate so it. Thank you. That's okay. just my, my two cents. You're welcome. Anything else on John, Angelina, anything more on uh, round table? I have nothing. Justin? Yeah, I had sent, uh, it was just in the form of a text to Tom. I see he's still kind of on here, uh, I think. Uh, Corinne had brought up, and I don't know why we didn't think to do it. Uh, you know, I think there's been a little bit of uneasiness but or whatever around around the the fact that we made our administ our assistant town clerk uh, a full-time position and you know she said you know there's nothing that would ha at that point in time and reflected in the minutes there was nothing on the orca video because none of it had been approved none of it had been published it was not a line item in the budget um and i had asked if we could just send a, a letter summarizing the offer that the, the, the board made to Corinne, to her, for her personal reference, because if I was, to me, that would be, I mean, to me, that'd be kind of, I, I would like to have that in front of me. You know, you're, you're being told one thing and it, it would be nice to have that letter. So I think that would be a standard procedure we'd put in there for anything. And I don't know why we didn't do it, but I, I was wondering what the other board members thought about summarizing the, uh, offer that we had made to Corinne should she accept it so that it was in there and it was solid and it was pretty clear to taxpayers where you know all the conversations the board had had about it unmute yourself John I'm I'm good with that I didn't I didn't really think about you know the that aspect of it I'm sure Corinne would you know just like something summarizing exactly you know what we agreed to so she knows for herself and um, I, I think that that's reasonable and we should do that. I was under the impression when we made those decisions that night that we were deferring to Rosemary in her capacity to put forward the information to Corinne. I, I, we, I, we, may have, we may have been, but the, you know, there's not a line item in the budget that sh reflects that. And based on the way we were choosing to budget that, um, it was just kind of, you couldn't really refer to it and say, okay, well, there, there's the line item for my salary. Um, so, I mean, Vince, did you get an offer letter from the town? Yes, I did. There you go. That says it to me right there. Anything else, Justin? I just want to thank Angelina for joining us and being a part of the board while I've been on there as well. Thank you. I thank you as well. Uh, anything else, Flo? There was just a couple of things. I wanted to weigh in on the snow machine discussion that we had through Roundtable. I'm not opposed to it. I haven't made a decision, but I think whatever we do going forward, we should put it on the agenda as opposed to a discussion in the round table like we did tonight. I don't think that's really following proper protocol. Um, the discussion tonight was good and it was informative, but by not having it on the agenda, other people, anyone who's interested 
didn't have the opportunity to be part of that discussion. So that in and of itself concerns me. Um, so I just want to address that. I'm not really of the thinking that we should have Vince at this point go forward with the things that we've discussed or was suggested tonight. I think that it should be discussed on a future board meeting and be warned in advance and then from there. And I also think that we have made that June 1st date in our last meeting. And to do anything outside of that right now is just um, making it more difficult per se. And then the other thing that I wanted to say is I wanted so, to thank Angelina for donating to the Berlin Fire Department her stipend. I think that was very nice and very generous. So thank you. So Flo, you're welcome. I, and um, I, I, Flo, I you know I've been on the board for three years. I've been discussing this um, vest and the snow machine trail for three years now and it's just not moving forward and I think you know just you know I, I've been on the on the board for long enough to know that it's it's time I just think that putting it off and putting it off and putting it off is not helping anybody and it's not serving a community or the people who want to go snow machining or or any of that i just think it's time and i see what you're so, saying and i'm not opposed but i, I to appreciate it like... go ahead go no, ahead you Angelina. go ahead i'm good i just was going to add that i just think know, that it's go ahead no no you go forward go ahead I just wanted to add that I understand what you're saying and that it's taken the three years and you've been on the board for that duration, but I think we are going forward with a process and we just need to carry that process forward. And it almost sounds as if tonight we're, you know, going a different direction or trying to bypass something in advance. Um, I don't really think that we're trying to do a disservice to VAST. I think we're just trying to carry things out accordingly. And so my take is that, yes, I think it should in eventuality move forward in whatever capacity is determined, but we just have to go the proper process. And so that's why I brought up the concerns tonight. Thank you. I, I just want to comment on that flow and I understand where you're coming from um, and can appreciate that perspective. To me, the perspective and the approach that we're taking is uh, still following the proper protocol and still trying to determine a timeline. Uh, what I think that we didn't don't have in place uh, for the town is is a process or a procedure for this. Um, and I think that being such a vague process and procedure and not having uh, having a staff of volunteers and 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 having their input from the advisory perspective is extremely valuable and important but i i feel like this is such a topic that we we need to have uh the professional maybe uh kind of it's in their wheelhouse the people that that handle these 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 processes or procedures or that deal with them on a daily basis I, I feel as though we should use them in an advisory role as well in an effort to maybe better utilize our board's resources or, or the talents that they have on there. So that's, that, that's why I think that, that I completely agree. If we're gonna take any action, we need to have agenda items on there. The, the boards are open to public comment, uh, round table, all of that every time. So we haven't chose to make any changes or make any decisions uh as a board so they 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 i get we want to keep people as in the loop as we can uh, i don't feel like this was a, a deceptive or a workaround on anybody's behalf to try to accomplish this i think this was simply a discussion to help better the town and move a move it forward and how to help develop a process so that we don't have a delay for any of these people that want to utilize the forest or, or 
in the forest, but any of these other things in town, we just need to have a procedure and a process in place so that people can know what to expect when they enter into it. And that's what I think that we've tasked Vince with doing is looking at a professional firm as a resource to help us do that for our citizens. Does that make any sense or is that, am I wrong in my perspective? It, may, it makes absolute sense to me. So any of you were on the board and Brad, except for Brad, we've been having this discussion. Okay, so, so the problem is that it keeps getting put off and it no there has never been a motion or any decision it just keeps getting put off you know it keeps getting put on the agenda and it's just a discussion and and proposing is that there is actual movement and that something is done and concrete and it moves forward there's no more discussion. It's no, it's not a, no longer an agenda item. It, it becomes um, fair to everybody and we just move forward. For, I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to, I don't want in three more years, I don't want to see this on the agenda again. So maybe we should just Does that have... make sense? Yeah. Yeah, John. Covered on the agenda every time. Would it make sense to have the vast, vast use of Berlin Town Forest on the agenda every time until we get through this process? Go ahead, John. I don't know what it's going to take, yeah. but I just think that you know Wayne and and Jeremy, uh, you know we've we've all talked about this. It's been three I'm about to leave, and I just want, you know, Josh has been out, he's been at meetings, closed everything that he possibly can, and I think that it's time to have an answer, and first to have an answer. I just think that, it, I don't think that we need to keep putting it off or that the future board members need to keep putting it off who don't know maybe about the discussions that have taken place over the years because this is this has been a process it's been a long process and we keep having new members join and they don't know exactly what the discussions were so it's frustrating i think to vast and to you know, people who want to utilize trails and it's frustrating for board members too, who have been here for a long time. I think, um, I, I just think that it, it needs to get dealt with and done. That's it. Yeah, John. Yeah. I mean, Flo, I, I think I understand what you were trying to say. Um, but based on that, we shouldn't be having any discussion about any future items on the round table then, and we really shouldn't have a round table. Well, round table was supposed to be just taking, uh, for the board members to take and voice uh, an opinion. I, that's, I think that's what I did. Um, yeah. and, and it evolved and it certainly did. But um, what I've noticed on my time on this board, and it's been extremely frustrating, is everyone sits quiet and nothing happens unless if you push it every single meeting. And I've learned that from Tom who um, in his time, and this is supposed to be a um, compliment, Tom, um, unless if you push something like the town center every single meeting and make sure we're moving it forward, it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, you know, I think Angelina was absolutely right. There's a, there's a lot of, you know, quietness and not wanting to, you know, stir, stir any pot at all and just, you know, go on approving payrolls. And that's, that's not why I got on the board and I didn't have an agenda and I didn't have a specific issue. Um, you know, I was asked to uh, consider, you know, donating my time to the town and while I'm here, I'm going to push issues and we're going to talk about them and, you know, and if we vote against it, then we vote against it and I'll move on. We can all move on and get on to the next issue. But, if we're not talking about them and moving them forward, then we're just not, 
we're not doing any good as a board. We're just going through the motions and nothing ever gets done in a town by doing that. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, that is absolutely correct. And it, it's time for that to, um, it's time for that to change because you, we, you can't do anything w without discussion and without addressing the issues and actually moving forward with it, making appointments. You know, I apologize that I have not been able and that is not completely my fault. That is the nature of what has happened in my life to me. And, you know, I've done my best. Um, and I am leaving the board now because I don't feel like I, um, I, I don't know how to word it, but I, I don't feel like I could be as participant as I um, could have been. And it's, and it's no fault of my own. It's because I, I was faced with having to look at my own life and having to look at um, myself as a, as a human being and dealing with issues that were personal. And that is not the, for the town to deal with. But I've done my best and I um, will finish out my term. And I hope that the board will take my into consideration and my experience into consideration and, and listen to that wholeheartedly and move in the future. If there's nothing else, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> A second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Have a good night, everyone. You too.